All right, <clears throat> so this is section 1.5, and these are going to be applications of right angle trigonometry. Okay, so in this section, uh, in the homework, you'll see a lot of word problems, and that's exactly what uh, this is all about. Uh, one of the skills that you'll want to be able to develop is going from the word problems to the math. Um, often for this class, uh, that often means drawing a picture, um, which gives all the information the words uh, tell you. And then from the picture, you solve the problem uh, using trig. All right. Um, I think uh, this section is traditionally pretty hard for people uh, because people aren't as used to kind of these types of word problems. So if you have time, I highly recommend you look in the book and do as many problems as you can from there, just for extra practice. Um, and if you don't have time to do the problems uh, all the way to the very end, at the very least, um, read the words and then translate that into a picture uh, showing you know, the information that the words gives you. And also, of course, identify the, um, the quantity that you're supposed to be finding in that picture. Uh, that's a very useful skill, um, and it's really hard to get without just doing a lot of practice. Okay, so let's let's jump right in. So this uh, lecture is just going to be example after example of different situations. We're definitely not going to cover all the examples um, or all the types of problems you'll see on the uh, homework, um, because that's almost impossible, because you can make an infinite variety of these kinds of problems, uh, because, you know, it can be so diverse. So what you want to be able to capture uh, from the examples, from the lectures and stuff, are you know how to go about you know the process of setting up and working these problems, the general idea of how to work them. Okay, so let's start with uh, an example. So we're standing 100 feet from a tree. Um, the angle of elevation, and I'll, I'll say what that is in, in one second, to the top of the tree is 60 degrees. Um, how tall is the tree? All right. Okay. Um, so let me draw a picture and I'll, I'll talk about what angle of elevation means. Uh, so let's draw, here's the earth, here's a, or the, the ground, here's a tree, like a pine tree or something. Um, we're standing 100 feet from the tree, so 100 feet, here's us. And in this problem, um, we're just going to pretend we're, we have no height, or maybe that we're lying on the ground like this, all right? So basically, our height is not in consideration for this problem, all right? Okay, what, I'm, what we mean by the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 60 degrees. Um, what that means is if I look up here, lying down here, looking up at the top of the tree like that, uh, let me draw a little better, right? Like that, this angle here is 60 degrees, okay? All right, so the question is, how tall is a tree? Which means we need to figure out that quantity right there. And I'm going to call it little h for, uh, for height. Ah, little h is no good, because uh, we use h for, um, for hypotenuse often, right? We don't want to have confusion. So let me call it y. OK, so um, essentially, uh, as you'll see from, from uh, me doing these examples, these are uh, often going to be uh, solving triangle problems. So what we have here is a right angle right there. And so we have a right triangle. And uh, we want we have information about one side uh, and one angle, and two angles actually, right? We know this 60 degrees, and we know this is 90 degrees, right? And what we want is um, this, op this uh, opposite side right there, OK? Um, this is actually a nice, uh, nice problem because you can use this in practice to calculate uh, heights of objects that uh, you're not going to be able to climb up 
and measure, you know, climb up with a tape measure to get the height of, right? If this tree happened to be really, really tall, how are you going to figure out how, how tall it is? This, this actually doing something like this is actually a great way to do it. Um, you don't have to climb anything at all. You just have to walk a certain amount of distance from the tree, right? It doesn't really even matter how far, right? 100 feet in this example. Um, you need to lie down on the ground and then kind of take a view at, of the top of the tree. And then um, perhaps one thing you can do if you don't have a protractor or anything to measure angles, one thing you can do is um, walk a distance away from the tree where when you lie down and view the top of the tree, the angle of elevation is 45 degrees, right? Or 60 degrees as in this example, because we know sines and cosines of 60 degrees, right? But 45 degrees is even simpler in a way, right? Um, and then from, you know, from what we're going to be calculating, you can, you can calculate the height of the, the tree or whatever object uh, we're talking about. Okay, so this problem uh, mostly is, is in the setup. Um, and uh, we can almost instantly see that, right, we have a 60 degrees. We have the opposite side that we don't know. We have an adjacent side that we do know, right? So we know that tangent of 60 degrees should be equal to opposite over um, adjacent. And immediately we're all set, right? So y is equal to 100 tangent 60 degrees, okay? And that's gonna be the height. Now, um, on online homework, it might be an angle that you don't know how to compute, right? But um, on exams, um, either I would ask you just to leave the answer like this. If it was, let's say 59 degrees, you would just leave the answer like this. All right. But in this situation, you actually can figure out tangent of 60 degrees. And let's say you didn't memorize the entire uh, sine, cosine, and tangent table from the last uh, section. Um, you know that tangent is sine over cosine, and you can just use that. Right. So this is going to be, and sine and cosine of 60 degrees is something that you de definitely should remember. So this is root 3 over 2 is sine of 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And so ultimately you get 100 root three feet. Okay, so this tree is actually pretty tall. You would not have wanted to climb up um, in order to measure its height because what if you fell, all right? Okay, so this is uh, um, the kind of problems that, that we'll be working with uh, in this section. Now you can have, like I said, these problems, you can have a, a large amount of variety, um, a similar problem, but not the same would be uh, something like this. You'll, you'll see something actually like this on your homework. You have a tower, right, like that. Maybe a radio tower or something. Um, and uh, there's a wire here holding it to the ground like this. Let's say we know the wire is 100 feet long, right? Let's say we know the height of the tower is 30 feet, right? So a question um, you could ask is what is this angle here? Right. Another question you can ask is what is this uh, length there? Right. So there's an, so you can already see, you know, just with a simple setup like this, uh, you can have a, a very large variety of problems. OK. All right. Uh, so again, for all these problems, uh, because we essentially only know how to work with right triangles at the moment, um, you, you want to identify right triangles for all the problems. Right. And in this problem, right, you've got a right triangle. Here's the hypotenuse. There's our um, side, here's our opposite side, and here we've got a, our 90 degree or pi over two angle, all right? And so you can see that if we wanna know this uh, length here, we can just immediately apply the uh, Pythagorean theorem, double question mark squared plus 30 squared is equal to 100 squared. And so double question mark squared is equal to um, 100 squared minus 30 squared. And so double question mark is equal to square root of that. And it's the positive square root only because we're talking about an actual distance in the real world, which cannot be negative. All right. And of course, you can um, you can calculate this business in here. Um, but this is essentially the, the core idea behind the problem. All right. What about single question mark? Well, for single question mark, we know that um, I mean, looking at the, the triangle, we have the opposite side, you know, opposite from the single question mark angle. We have the hypotenuse. And so immediately we know that um, sine of single question mark 
is equal to 30 over 100. Again, opposite over hypotenuse. And again, you know, even though we talked about the definitions of um, the kind of more official, more mathematical definitions of sines and cosines last section, um, we can use the opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse for today, for this section, because we're talking about actual right triangles. So those, you know, those um, uh, formulas, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, is something that a lot of us are comfortable with. So that's why I'm going with, uh, with that here today. Okay, so this is 3 over 10, right? And 3 over 10, sine of what is equal to 3 over 10? We don't know, right? It's not one of the quantities that uh, we're expected to know. And so here you would have to use a calculator. Question mark is equal to arc sine, and you just use the arc sine function of your button or your app. Um, and again, we'll go in depth into what that actually means, what you're really doing when you do this uh, in the future. But for now, just think of it as a button that tells you the answer as to what the angle should be. Okay. All right. And again, um, especially for the online homework, if they want the angle in uh, degrees, make sure you've set the arc sign so that it gives you degrees. Uh, or if, if they want it in radians, make sure you, you uh, have it in radians. All right, set into radians. Um, if you did plug this in, you would get something like 17.45 degrees. All right. By the way, I always use the squiggly lines when I use a calculator because when you use a calculator, you always introduce mistakes um, into, your, into your calculation. And so the squiggly line uh, means is approximately. All right. So arc sine of 3 tenths is approximately 17.45. Uh, but not exactly. All right. Okay. So let's uh, let's do a more uh, complex setup. Um, let's say we've got a tree again. So again, I, I kind of want to use this this tree example quite a bit, just to again emphasize that you can have a huge diversity of problems just from you know calculating the height of a tree. Uh, so you don't want to get stuck into the thought where every time you see the word tree, you think that you, the problem should be done, you know, this or that way. Um, you don't want to be too rigid in your kind of thinking. Okay. All right. Now this time, um, let's say we have a river here, right? So it's not that easy to, um, to walk, you know, or to figure out how, how far we are from the tree, right? Before we, we, we said we just you know walk out a pace of whatever 100 feet we look at this uh angle of elevation and we could calculate it right but maybe this time you can't walk walk uh, that distance from the tree because there's a big river in the way right so you can't actually measure that distance um however um, what we can do is this let's say um, i'm on this side of the river and i i lie down and i look at the tree and i see an angle of elevation of 40 degrees all right now, let's do this. Let's step back a few feet. Let's step back 10 feet. Okay. Now let's, oops, sorry. Now let's um, look at the top of the, lie down, look at the top of the tree. And again, I, I say lie down just to emphasize, we're not taking into account our, our own height into the, into the problem. All right. So let's say we do that. And uh, that was kind of terrible. Let me do this. Okay, and let's say our angle this time, after we've moved back 10 feet further from the tree, let's say our angle of elevation now is 25 degrees. Okay, so the question is, what is the height of the tree? All right, and again, this is a nice, in a way, practical application in that you can actually calculate the height of the tree where um, you might not be able to actually approach the tree itself, right? You have to kind of be looking from a distance because of this, whatever, this barrier or this river or whatever, whatever thing is preventing you from uh, doing what we did in the first problem, okay? All right, so this particular problem is a little more complex. Um, this, the kind of quantity we want is still the same. We want this height y, right? But this time we don't know uh, this length right there. Right, this guy is question mark, question mark. We don't know it, okay? Uh, if we could figure it out, we would be all set. 
because if we could figure out that length right there, we could it would exactly be a problem, the first problem that we did, because uh, 45 degrees here, um, y is the opposite side, the adjacent side would be this guy here that we would that we have figured out if we did figure it out, right? And so we would be done. Okay. Um, so let's actually give this guy a name. So let me call this guy here. Uh, let me call it x. All right. So essentially, we know that if we figure out x, then we can solve the problem. But we don't necessarily have to figure out x, right? Uh, but we just know that it's an important quantity in this problem. So that's why I'm giving it a name. All right. Okay. Um, so in this particular problem, we actually have uh, this x unknown and this y is unknown. And we know the 40 degrees for this uh, right triangle right there. That's actually not enough information to give, give me x and y. Right. So I can't solve the problem just through looking at this, uh, this right triangle, the, the inner right triangle here. But notice we have a second right triangle, this big outer right triangle as well. Okay, so this problem we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna have to consider both right triangles at the same time. So let me redraw it here uh, without the tree, just the, the, the um, kind of relevant tr uh, trig part. So y, x, 10, 25 degrees, 40 degrees. All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start writing uh, out kind of equations that I know about my problem, all right? So as I said, um, as, as we did in the first problem, we know tangent of 40 degrees is opposite y over x. So tangent 40 degrees is y over x. And again, let me emphasize, this is a right triangle here, okay? <clears throat> also, uh, this uh, bigger triangle, bigger right triangle out here, tangent of that, tangent of 25 degrees, right, of this 25 degrees, is opposite y over adjacent, but this time the adjacent is 10 plus x. Okay. All right, why did I write down these equations? The first thing is I know tangent 40 degrees because I can do it with a calculator, right? I know 20, tangent 25 degrees because I can do it with a calculator. And what I, so what I see here is I have two equations, right? And I have two unknowns, uh, being those unknowns being x and y, right? Um, now, there's a general idea in math that if you have the same number of equations as you have unknowns, then you're in good shape. Then you can probably solve the problem. Right? So I use very vague words here because it's not always true, but this is, the, this is what you're generally looking for. If you have three unknown quantities, you would like to see three equations relating those quantities. Okay, So here we have two unknown quantities. So we would like to have two relationships between those, those quantities. And that's exactly what we have, right? This would be the first relationship between the two quantities. And in words, it would be the ratio of the two quantities is tangent 40 degrees. And here we have another relationship between the two quantities, all right? So now we know, um, essentially, uh, in general, that if we just work algebra, we'll be able to solve this problem, all right? Okay, now um, we go about solving this by just doing algebra. So we have two unknowns. So if we write one of the quantities in terms of the other, right, then we'll be able to kind of substitute that into the other equation. So um, let me call this equation one, equation two. Equation one um, tells me that um, x is equal to, so I'm gonna throw the x to the left, throw the tangent to the right, y over tangent 40 degrees, okay? And the reason I'm, I'm solving for x here, uh, writing x in terms of y as opposed to y in terms of x, is because I know that ultimately I want y. And so when I substitute this into the second equation, it's gonna help me solve for y. Now I could um, write y in terms of x, use the second equation to solve for x, and then rewrite y in terms of, and, and then kind of plug that x into our, our equation to get, um, to get the y. But that would involve an extra step. So this saves me one, one small step, but you could do it the other way as well. Okay, so um, equation two 
So what this tells me is um, equation 2 is the same as tangent 25 degrees equals y over 10 plus, right? And what is x? x is now y over tangent 40 degrees, okay? And this is really important here because um, if you look at this equation now, there's only one unknown, y, right? And so we've made our, our problem easier from two equations and two unknowns into a problem of just one equation and one unknown. And this is what you're always looking for in math to make your problem simpler and simpler and simpler from step to step to step, okay? So even though it looks horrible, a little bit horrible, uh, the idea is our problem has actually gotten simpler because it has fewer unknowns now. Okay, and now we just solve for y, again using algebra. So um, next step, I could throw all this stuff down here to the other side. So this would be 10 plus y over tangent 40 degrees times tangent 25 degrees is equal to y. <clears throat> um, the, my kind of reasoning for doing this here is that I want ultimately want y equal something, right? And so I don't want y's and denominators anymore. And um, so that's why I threw this denominator to the left-hand side so that this y down here would end up on top, all right? Okay, now this is equal to what? I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna multiply or distribute the 20, tangent 25 in. So it's 10 tangent 25 degrees plus tangent 25 degrees over tangent 40 degrees times y is equal to y, okay? Now I've got this y and that y, so I'm gonna throw all the y's to the same side now. This is 10 tangent 25 degrees equals y minus tangent 25 degrees over tangent 40 degrees times y, okay? But this guy here is actually just equal to y times one minus tangent 25 degrees over tangent 40 degrees, just pulling out the y from each, each term. Uh, let me, let me kind of write it more completely. And now I just throw the stuff I don't want uh, that's not y to the other side. So that means y is equal to, and I'm gonna divide by this business here, 10 tangent 25 degrees over uh, one minus tangent 25 degrees over tangent 40 degrees, okay? And that's my final answer. Um, on an exam, leave it like this. Uh, on the online homework, plug it into your calculator. Because um, again, tangent 25 degrees, tangent 40 degrees are two quantities that you're not expected to have memorized. All right. Okay. Um, one note here. Uh, if you are working together in this class, um, note that if you compare your homework with someone else's, uh, the answer in this form, if I write it in this form, it might look different, but ultimately it's the same, right? Because this, this guy here could actually be simplified, or if we had done different steps in the algebra, the final form of this answer might look a little different, but ultimately it's, it's actually the same number, all right? Okay, another note. Um, Notice that I chose to carry the tangent 25s, the tangent 40s, all the way until the end. And then I only use the calculator at the very end. I think that's a very good habit to keep um, for our class. Um, because number one, it forces us to work with uh, these kind of unknown quantities all throughout the problem so that we become more comfortable uh, doing these kind of computations, right? With quantities that are kind of unpleasant looking. Uh, number two, in a more practical sense, um, this is a good habit because you want to use a calculator as little as possible. Um, the more you use a calculator, the more you, you introduce errors into your problem. And if you're using a calculator 10 times in a problem, then you're introducing error after error after error after error. And even if your calculator is very accurate, 10 digits of accuracy, um, doing this, you know, introducing a small error after a small error after a small error, those can build up and you could potentially end up with an answer that's actually very wrong by doing this, all right? So I highly recommend for, for multiple reasons to you know, carry all these unknown quantities until the very end and then just use the calculator at this point right now, okay? Calculator or whatever calculating app you're using.
All right, because I know a lot of people probably it's good for them to to um, have practice working with kind of unknown quantities in their equations um, more. Okay, uh, so a couple um, comments here. So we've already talked about angle of elevation. So that would be if you're looking at a tree again, like this, just as a quick reminder, that's this angle right here. Okay, so you're looking up at the tree, that's the angle of elevation. So there's another term, angle of depression. And that's if you're looking, um, let's say from a horizontal height down at something, this angle here would be the angle of depression. All right, so, um, You'll see a problem on the online homework where it uses that term. Just remember it's it's this particular angle when you're looking kind of from above down to something. All right, just a term, uh, no real math content here in this, in this kind of small comment. Okay, uh, also um, in the uh, online homework, uh, in the homework, you'll see problems which do involve uh, having to work with uh, two triangles, just like this one that we had here, but Potentially, the triangles could be in a different configuration. Uh, you have to figure it out. All right. So again, I would actually want to uh, not do examples of every problem in the homework, just so that you have to figure some out for yourself, so that you become more comfortable doing exactly that. All right. What I mean is different by different configurations is uh, there'll be problems perhaps where you know you have two triangles. But the two triangles are, are like this. Two right triangles are like that, right? Here we had two right triangles, kind of one inside the other, right? Again, you can do a huge variety, huge diversity of these kinds of problems. And it's good for you to at least try to figure out for yourself um, at least some of them. Okay. Let's do, um, let's do one more example here. So in this one, we have a satellite. Oops. We have a satellite um, that's orbiting the Earth at a height of 350 miles above the uh, surface of the Earth. All right, so our satellite is here. Uh, maybe we draw it like that. Okay, um, its distance to the surface of the Earth is 350 miles. All right, okay. Um, here's the center of the earth uh, for this problem uh, and in general for this book uh, the radius of the earth is going to be 300 3,950 uh, miles all right okay so the question is what is the length of the arc visible to the satellite. All right, so what I mean by that is if you do have a satellite here, imagine it has a camera, it's some sort of um, spy satellite or maybe just a Google, Google Maps um, satellite taking pictures, uh, forest fire satellite, whatever, right? The question is, uh, if you do have a satellite like this, 350 miles above the Earth, how much of the Earth can it see? That's essentially what this is asking. Because what's going to happen is, right, this satellite can see that that part of the Earth, right? And in this problem, the Earth, you can just think of the Earth as a circle, okay? Um, it can see that, that part of the Earth. It can see here on Earth. It can see here on Earth, right? But it can't see anymore, right? So, for example, this point right there on Earth, um, the satellite can't see because it's obstructed, all right? Same thing on the other side, uh, the satellite can see that point, right? If it takes a photo, it can see that point. If it takes a photo, it can see that point. If it takes a photo, it can see this point. But anything past that is gonna be obstructed, okay? So what we wanna know is um, what is the length of the arc visible to the satellite that's referring to this part right there, 
this arc right there. All right, anything on the anything past this arc, the satellite cannot see. Right, anything on the arc, the satellite can see. So we essentially want to know how much of the Earth um, can the satellite see. All right, how many miles of the of the uh, surface of the Earth can this uh, can the satellite see? Okay, so um, this problem uh, we're going to have to know a little bit about circles uh, to do this one. And the fact about circles that we that we need to know is that if I take the center of the um, the Earth here, and we're here as um, of course just assuming the Earth is a nice simple uh, sphere or circle actually in this problem, um, the important fact is that if I take this center here and I go to the kind of the very last point that the satellite can see, all right, then this line right here, kind of the uh, line that just touches the circle. It's tangent, right? From uh, from high school geometry, right? Uh, this is a right right triangle, a right angle. Okay, so the the line that's any line that's tangent to a circle. So if I have any circle here, I have a line that's tangent to the circle. Tangent as in just touches the circle. If I draw uh, a, a radius segment from the center of the uh, circle. To the um, to that point right there, it's always going to be a right angle. Okay, so same thing on the other side. Uh, the in a way, the last point that the satellite can see is right there, and so this guy is tangent, and so this right here is a right angle. All right, so that's the small bit of geometry that you have to know uh, for these kinds of problems. Okay, so here is another problem where we have um, right right. Uh, a right triangle, right? And so we know we can possibly use some of our trig to solve the problem. Okay, let me let me redraw the picture just because it's gotten a little uh, messy. So we have this, we have this, we have this. Um, and uh, on the other side, we have the same picture. Literally the same, the same picture. These two triangles are actually congruent. Center of the Earth, here's my satellite. Uh, this one here is 350 miles. This length here was uh, 3950. All right. Okay. Um, so how do we figure out uh, the length of the arc? So again, this blue shaded region. Well, this is an application uh, of our previous section, uh, one point. 1.2 it was, um, where the length of the arc depends on the angle, right? Uh, the angle right there and the radius of, um, in this case, radius of the Earth. All right. So uh, the arc length, let me, uh, let me actually write, write down here. The arc length, S, that's what we call it, is equal to this angle. Let me call it theta, or I think we call it alpha. In that section so let me call it alpha times uh, the radius 3950 so that was the formula from 1.2 okay so essentially that means that all we need to do is figure out what alpha is all right then we just plug it into here and we're all set and again very I, I definitely want to emphasize um, alpha has to be in terms of radians or this formula is incorrect if it's for example in degrees okay um, so we just need to figure out alpha, right? But what is alpha? Well, like I said, um, alpha is this angle from here to here, but if I look at this picture, these two triangles are congruent, and so this angle right there is alpha over 2, and that angle right there is alpha over 2 as well. So in, in our kind of cleaned up picture, this guy here is alpha over 2, all right? So in fact, we don't need to consider both triangles. I mean, they're actually the same, right? Uh, all we need to do is just figure out this angle right here, and we'll know alpha over 2, which means we'll know alpha. All right? Okay, but how do we do that, right? We have a right triangle. We have 3950 plus 350 as this hypotenuse length right here, right? Um, on first glance, right, it doesn't look like we have any other bits of information, but remember, up here in our Earth picture, this length here, this is a radius, right? This is a radius segment of our circle. 
and we know the radius of the Earth is 3950. So actually, this length right there is 3950. Okay. And now we're all set, right? So what we have, let me draw another picture. So this is our right triangle here. This is alpha over 2, 3950. And this hypotenuse right here is 3950 plus 350. So that's going to be 0, uh, 10, 3, 4. Okay. And pretty much we're all set here because... Let's see, our alpha over 2 that we're looking for, um, its adjacent side is 3950. It's hy the hypotenuse here is 4300. So we know we should probably write down the cosine expression is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right. And so that tells me that alpha over 2 is equal to arc cosine of 3950-4300, which tells me alpha is equal to two times that. And again, I'm going to carry these um, kind of ugly looking terms until the very end, and then I'm going to use my calculator. All right. I th again, I think it's a very, very good habit to, to keep. Okay. Um, and again, uh, what was S? S was equal to uh, the radius times alpha. So alpha times 3950, which is equal to, uh, in this case, uh, two times 3950 times arc cosine of 3950-4300, like that. And we're all set. Um, this is something that we can calculate uh, using our calculator. And this is actually, again, in terms of a picture. Here's our satellite, right? This length right there, this distance right here, is that, that size right there in miles. And again, that's how much of the Earth that um, your satellite can see. All right, let me mention one more thing. Um, here's the Earth. So let's do another problem with the Earth. Um, Here's the center of the Earth. Let's see. Let's draw. Sorry. Uh, let me not do the center of the Earth yet. Uh, let me draw it as a sphere. Okay. Let's draw the United States. The United States is here. Okay. Then everything else like that. Uh, let's look at this point right there, Orlando, Florida. And perhaps let's look at this point right here. New York City. Okay. Um, if you look up on Wikipedia, uh, New York City is at around 40 degrees latitude. Orlando is at around 28 degrees latitude. Uh, what do these mean? So if I kind of just look at a um, Earth from the, uh, from the side like this, just kind of a flat picture. Um, what this means is if Orlando is here, then what that 28 degrees uh, latitude mean, means is if I draw the, this is the equator right there, kind of again, this is a, very, a flat picture version. This is 28 degrees, there's Orlando, right? That's what 28 degrees latitude means, okay? Um, where's New York City? New York City would be, again, if this is the equator, made a little long. If this is the equator here, 40 degrees here, that would be New York City. Okay. I mean, if you were to draw a 3D picture, 40 degrees latitude would be all the points are in a, in a circle like that, right? Where this angle here is 40 degrees. Okay. All right. Now, an interesting question is, what is the linear velocity um, of someone standing at uh, uh, in Orlando, Florida, versus linear velocity of someone standing 
in New York City. And by linear velocity, I mean um, due to rotation of the Earth. All right, same here, right? Because the Earth is spinning, uh, rotating about the, its axis, the North-South Pole. And so if you're standing on the Earth, you're spinning around in a circle, right? So what is your linear velocity at, in Orlando at 28 degrees latitude versus New York City at 40 degrees latitude? So this is a good uh, kind of thing to compute. You'll see the difference between the numbers. So one thing before you even compute, maybe think about which one should be a bigger number. Should your linear velocity be bigger at New York City or should your linear velocity be bigger at Orlando? All right. Um, and then you can go, go and do the computation. And you can do this computation now because now we, we have the technology of the trig functions um, and all the examples that we just did. So um, this is a good calculation to do. And then you can think about, does this matter? How does this matter in real life? Uh, it, are there applications or some sort of uh, real life use of the fact that the linear velocities might be different at these two different locations? Okay, you'll see something like this on the uh, paper homework.